bad in the drugs and math and all that and just it totally screwed my life up. We keep all that stuff inside and it just builds up and it builds up. When I walk through those doors, I had relocated. I was homeless. They've opened up their doors, they've welcomed me, they've made me part of this family. It wasn't for me kind of getting to that depth, that the, the lowest as I could go, and turning and knowing that um, God was my salvation. I wanted, there is no way I'd be here doing the things I do. They speak of their faith as if endless blessings flow. It's brought me back from um, really, really hard times. Um, I used to be a drug addict, and my husband's in a lot of trouble right now, and I either had to. Um, Turn to drugs or God, and I, I turn to God. They speak of God's grace as if they've been showered. And I feel the joy in my heart. I'm able to walk out there, and I'm just like thanking God, you know, for bringing me home. And they have. Trudy, Harold, and Angie know God's grace because they feel it each day. They live without meth or alcohol or whatever substance they used to use to get through one. It became a lifestyle. I couldn't get out of bed without doing meth and, you know, take care of my family. Well, it took a numb, and it's terrible. It takes over your life. It takes your family from you. Addicted to meth and away from her family in jail, Trudy had hit rock bottom before a friend brought her to the river. There's just something about this church. They don't give up on you. They come to your home and check on you. They call you. you make, they make sure you're okay. They just don't. You just don't come here Sunday, and that's the last you see them. Through the power of prayer and a renewed faith, Trudy has been clean for over a year now. It's made a dramatic difference in her life and in her relationship with her children. They're just like, Mom, you smile all the time now, you know, and it's you see a different attitude in you, and you you look better, you know. Physically, they see it. I pray every night. Sometimes during that day, when I'm just getting really frustrated, I just reach out. You know, God, just help me get through this, or what should I do? Or I'm just really frustrated right now. Give me the strength to keep on going. There was a time when Harold didn't want to keep on going. There was moments of suicide thoughts. There was moments of just, you know, weeks of depression. Depression and rebellion brought on by the death of his beloved mother. Harold was upset with God. And it wasn't until he met his wife in 1999 that he renewed his walk a walk that has grown stronger since they joined the river. They've opened up their doors, they've welcomed me, they've made me part of this family. Feeling welcome was a welcome feeling for Harold, who was often shunned because of his look. Some of us carry our past, you know, hidden, you know, and then part of me, I got tattoos, so some of the first impression people get, you know, they see this guy with tattoos and knowing that he grew up in Detroit and they you know, start shutting their doors and thinking that I'm crazy. Not at the river. Here he's an active member sharing his gifts with the rest of the congregation. I know there's four walls that we all sit in here, a little bit of a shelter, but there's really no boundaries to how big you can grow as being part of the river family. Like Trudy, Angie was born and raised in Allegan. Like Trudy and Harold, her connection with God, her faith came to life at the river. There was no judgment here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't well, you're an unwed mother and, you know, you just had a baby. Well, where were you all these years? What have you been doing with your life? No, it's a warm welcome. You want to God, you want to see God, you want to worship God, welcome. Months later, she's back on her feet and welcoming others with a job, a home, a car, and hope of regaining custody of her baby daughter. God had to show me the light. He had to show me, I am here. I have not forgotten you. I've not let you go because there was a time in my life where I had kind of been angry with God because I thought that he let me go. Stories like these are fairly typical at the river. I'm amazed weekly, I guess, at what God does, but um, I've at the same time come to expect it and uh, to hope for it. When John Vugdevine was called to pastor this church three and a half years ago, the river resembled a well run dry. Only 12 people showed up for one Sunday service, a broken church in a broken community. So the church cried out to God for help. His answer was to send John and his wife Lori, home missions, classes Zealand, classes Holland, and friends like Mark and Leanne Jansen, 
all became involved in rebuilding the ministry. And the first thing they did was saturate the church in prayer. Uh, I think it was a test uh, on our own spiritual growth, whether we'd see God really show up in a church uh, if we prayed. And uh, I think we saw the answer uh, in, in prayer um, that God showed up on a daily basis with us as, as this church kind of uh, rebirthed. Through prayer, they watched in wonder and witnessed a miracle. He's going to do the greatest miracle. Less than a year after answering God's call, 18 people were baptized. In October 2005, 15 more committed their lives to Christ. And in May and June of 2006, 21 more baptisms were performed at the river. Now the seats in the sanctuary are filled with over 100 people each Sunday. Like the disciples, they threw out their nets and marveled at what God brought in. You know, I would say in three years we've seen God transform and bring hope and healing to people that, you know, the hope and healing was not in their lives uh, when we started. And it's not because of us, it was because God showed up and he brought, he was the doctor and he did the surgeries that needed to be done. The most important thing that this church brings to Allegan is um, being Jesus with skin on. A lot of these people have hurt lives and hurt lifestyles and Coming here, they're accepted with their tattoos, with their tattered clothes, however they are. They're accepted and loved, and they learn who Jesus is, and their lives are transformed. Long before he answered the call, John went through many of the same struggles as the people he now counsels. The past is the past, but God turns even the rotten stuff into good for those, I guess, that come to love him. And so while uh, I guess, you know, God called Peter to be from a fisherman to be a fisher of men. Um, maybe he called me from being a party animal to being a <laughs> someone that invites people to the ultimate party. And he's not going to come barging in. You got to let him in. You got to open the gates and let him in. Lives are in the balance, you know. Not that it depends on me whether or not someone ends up in heaven. God can handle that. But the opportunity is now, and, and I'm called now, and I'm called for this season, and, um, and I, I've got to do what I've got to do for God and with God, and, and if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be able to do any of it.